This is a CBS News special report. The flight of Apollo 10. Reporting from the CBS News Apollo headquarters in New York, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening. The flight of Apollo 10 is going exceedingly well. Although we haven't heard from the spacecraft now for uh, 35 minutes or so, they're on the 14th revolution of the moon, the two of them, the lunar module called Snoopy, the command module called Charlie Brown. They're back behind the moon, and there is no communication with Earth. It'll be another 10 minutes before we get another signal from them. Uh, at this point, the uh, lunar module should be out at the high point of its uh, orbit around the moon, its second into Independent orbit of the moon away from Charlie Brown out about 227 miles and it would be plunging now just about down toward the moon surface again. It will be on that uh, downward path as they come around on the right side of the moon as we look at it from here on Earth, come around to the near side of the moon and uh, establish communications again 10 minutes from now. They'll come down this time to about 13 miles. It looks like their orbit is now 13 and a half perhaps miles over that at the landing site uh, about midpoint in the moon as we look at it right on the equator. Uh, then they will at that point at uh at uh, 47 minutes after the hours, tw 33 minutes after the hour, 7.33, about uh, 31 minutes from now, they will separate uh, from the descent stage of their lunar module and begin the uh, tricky maneuver of climbing back to 69 mile altitude and rejoining the command module uh, called Charlie Brown where uh, John Young awaits them. That uh, separation involves this. They fire first time in the hole, as it's called, from the uh, descent stage. That's never been done before. It wasn't done on uh, the Apollo 9 uh, flight. And down there, just 11 miles from the moon, they will fire off, leaving this descent stage behind. And uh, with their engine with the ascent stage, come back to 69-mile altitude and rejoin the command module. The maneuver begins at 7.33 Eastern Daylight Time from now, and it's now 7.03 Eastern Daylight Time, and it will be after 10 o'clock tonight before that maneuver is completed. They will begin the terminal phase of the maneuver at 9 minutes after 10 tonight. The rendezvous should come at 10.54, and the docking about uh, 19 minutes after 11. The flight has gone exceedingly well today, but there have been some heart-stopping moments uh, right after early this morning, around oh, 11 o'clock uh, this morning after Cernan and Tom Stafford had climbed into the lunar module. They had a little trouble getting their communications going, but then that was all cleared up. It was only temporary. A little later on today, uh, an hour after that time, uh, when they began testing their spacecraft before separation, they found that they could not depressurize the three-foot tunnel between the lunar module and the command module, and that proved to be a very very serious concern and worry because without the depressurization of that tunnel it meant that uh, there was added friction set up between the two spacecraft and the possibility of damage to the docking rings absolutely necessary for their redocking tonight uh, so Houston looked very carefully at that problem as did the astronauts themselves considerable concern about it until they decided that they could go ahead and undock anyway. However, that decision was really left to the astronauts. They were given some uh, parameters beyond which they could not go, some constraints. Uh, uh, they had to watch very carefully as to whether there was too much of the movement between the two spacecraft that might damage those rings. When they decided there wasn't, they made the decision themselves on the far side of the moon and separated. And then the first firing of the lunar module's descent stage engine and that went exactly uh, on time to bring them down within 10 miles of the moon's surface uh, revolution ago. Then Stafford and Cernan very excitedly called up the sites they were seeing. The communications were not too good, and we heard that both of their cameras aboard failed. How many pictures they got before that happened, we don't know. But at any rate, uh, perhaps they got some pictures for us, and we got some voice description of the amazing sights they were seeing. The most important thing, the landing radar, which will have to work for the Apollo 11 spacecraft so that it can set down on the moon's surface, worked apparently exceedingly well. It gave uh, precise readouts to Stafford and Cernan as to their position over the moon. And furthermore, by eyeballing it, as pilots say, by looking at the site, they said they saw no problem 
problem for the moon landing. They said it looked even smoother than they expected, although the terrain around there was apparently uh, pretty sensational for them. As a matter of fact, Tom Stafford said that he saw enough boulders to fill all of Galveston Bay. And the first word from John Young, uh, flying overhead 69 miles high in the command module, uh, reporting back to Earth, was that the first words from Stafford and Cernan, well, he said, they're mumbling down there about all the boulders. They've been going through a uh, uh, short period here of uh, getting a bite to eat, presumably, aboard the spacecraft as we wait for them to acquire signal again, coming around this side of the moon. That comes in another five minutes now. And we might go back out to Grumman Aircraft in Bethpage, Long Island, where the, they build this lunar module. Nelson Benton and Scott McLeod are there, and they can tell us something about mealtime, since we're all enjoying it just about now. Walter, um as we reported earlier, we were preparing uh, the dessert. We had a little bit of trouble uh, injecting the water into this space bag that has the chocolate pudding in it, but we've overcome that problem. And uh, the chocolate pudding is ready. You use sort of a toothpaste tube mode to eat it. And it comes to the top, and uh, it tastes like chocolate pudding. Scott, there's something else on this. Uh, this bag, too, a big pill on the top. Is is that a pill, or ju just what is it? Well, Nelson, that's not a bicarb. What you do with this pill is when you've finished eating the food, then you take the pill out, break it in half, and insert it back through this tube. And it's obviously what, what you... Purpose? Well, you can't roll the window down and throw the bag out, so you must keep this food in the capsule, and it will begin to smell after a while, and this kills the bacteria. It's inside sort of, it. Sort of a matter of uh, space dishwashing, I suppose. Well, I guess so, yes. Well, Walter, the eat period for Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan is just about over now, and uh, they'll be approaching the very critical stage of the flight, the rendezvous with Charlie Brown up above them on a full stomach. Well, we've been through many of the critical points of this flight now. We got uh, off of the Earth's surface on last uh, Sunday afternoon. We got into the uh, translunar trajectory in good shape, got into the lunar orbit. We've had the first firing of the descent stage of the uh, lunar module. The separation went well, and now we have the important function of getting back to the command module. This is critical because, of course, the lunar module cannot return to Earth safely on its own. It could probably get back into a trans-Earth trajectory, but, tra trajectory, but it uh, could not enter the Earth's atmosphere. It is not protected by a heat shield. It would, uh, is not meant to fly in the space atmosphere, and it could not fly. So the uh, lunar module has to rejoin the command module tonight, and they've got one more of those close passes over the moon's surface. However, that has now been accomplished once, and some of the fear and the danger uh, regarding such a close passage has uh, uh, now been dissipated. It has worked as uh, Houston and all of the space engineers and scientists were sure it would work. Uh, they were able to swoop within 10 miles of the moon's surface, not be uh, seriously affected, apparently, by by those mass concentrations of material under the moon's surface, which cause uh, some uh, deviations in the lunar gravity, and with some concern for uh, the pilots before they tested it this first time, the second sweep over the uh, moon at 13-mile uh, altitude should provide no problems. CBS News color coverage, the flight of Apollo 10, will continue in a moment.